Testing, one, two, 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 three, 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 four, four. Forty five on that clock. Good morning again, Nimrod. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Great, thank you. Just try all of them, maybe. Yeah. Good morning again, Larry. Can you hear us? I can, thanks. Great, thank you. We can't see him. Good morning, Yim. Can you hear us? The phone or... Good morning, Yim. Can you hear us? Where did Nimrod go? Oh, 
Good morning, Yim. Can you hear us now? Good morning, Yim. Can you hear us now? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, are we all ready to go? Yeah. We're starting from the beginning. We're going to restart because we had no uh, audio on YouTube. So for those of you who have already heard this, read something else. Good morning. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted via WebEx on an online digital platform and will be live streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and a provincial order that limits attendance at public gatherings. My name is Donald Granitstein and I will be chairing this hearing. Panel members participating via WebEx who can be seen and heard are Larry Clay, Nimrod Salomon and Yin Chan. City staff will be assisting us throughout the meeting, including moderating the WebEx platform. Agents, applicants, and other interested parties participating in this virtual hearing registered in advance and will be connecting through WebEx using a compatible electronic device. Their participation will be via audio only. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The committee considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone who wants to receive a copy of, of our decision for an application must submit a written request by email to the general email address for the Committee of Adjustment Toronto and East York District Office. Please include your name, address, and an email address. All Committee of Adjustment and TLAB notifications and appeal updates will be sent by email only. If you don't agree with our decision, uh, you may appeal to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited, limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal. Appeal instructions will be set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. Participants who have registered in advance will be connected to this virtual hearing and will be muted automatically upon entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda subject to vetting. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with his or her presentation if required. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter directly into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five-minute mark. When addressing the committee, please speak slowly and clearly. State your name and address. Please confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. Where required, the applicant or agent will proceed first with a presentation of the application. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have completed their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent will be unmuted and will have an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. 
This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for a decision. Please note the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are informed of the changes. Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, have the minutes of the last Committee of Adjustment public hearing been confirmed by the members? Yes, they have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do any of the panel members or staff have any interest to declare in any of the items scheduled today? No declarations. Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, are there any requests to withdraw an application? No, there are not. All right, we will now proceed to our hearing. Uh, I have vetted the list. Uh, all those that are opposed will be held until we deal with all the unopposed matters. Those being held are number 1679 Dover Court Road, number 228 Marlowe Avenue, number 8 1059 Bloor Street West, number 968 Winona Drive, number 15, 310 Spadina Road, and number 20, 57 Major Street. We will now proceed with the first item, which is number 3, 34 Oxford Street. The purpose of this application is to alter the existing two-story semi-detached dwelling by rebuilding the existing front second-story balcony. Uh, before us on this application, we have material submitted by the applicant and correspondence and support from 31 Oxford Street. Um, so is the applicant or agent online? Yes, I am. Ms. Chu? Yes. Yes. My name is Peggy Chu. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just going to give my name and address. <laughs> Peggy yes, Chu, 124 please. Merton Street. Okay, thank you. I don't believe we need to a uh, presentation on this matter. Uh, do we have any questions from the panel or do we have someone prepared to put a mo motion forward? Uh, Chair, I think this one is very straightforward. It's a very minor variance, and uh, I don't think it needs any discussion. I would prepare to put a motion to approve with no conditions. Thank you. Any? Uh, uh, do we have a seconder? Second. Okay. Nin Yin's seconded. All in favor? You have your approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number 482 Ford Street. The purpose of the application is to convert the existing two-story detached duplex into a, a triplex. Each floor, including the basement, will contain one dwelling unit. And on this application, we have before us, material submitted by the applicant, uh, two letters in opposition, one from 78 Ford Street, one from 324 Old Weston Road. Um, is the applicant online? Uh, yes, I am. Um, if I can make a clarification. Yes. Um, the letter from 324 Old Weston Road is actually a letter in support if it's read um, the letter from 78 Forest Street is in opposition, so there's only one letter in opposition. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, could we have your name and uh, address, please? Yes, my name is Terrence Glover from Urban and Mine Planning Consultants. Uh, my address is 3370 South Service Road, Unit 103 in Burlington, Ontario. All right, thank you, Mr. Glover. I don't believe we need a presentation on this matter. Are there any questions from the panel or, or is someone prepared to put a motion forward? I'll put forward a motion to approve the request variance. There is only one variance and it's for parking and I believe it is a, a minor in nature. And so I would move approval. All right, do we have a seconder? 
Yin, second. I, uh, I will second it, and I agree with uh, Mr. Solomon, and then I agree with the planning rationale that the applicant submitted. And uh, Saint Clair uh, West is a, a, a major transit corridor. I agree with that. So I, I will second that motion. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Number 563 McGill Street. Yeah, the purpose of this application is to alter the existing two three-story townhouse by extending the interior rear floor into open space above the basement floor to increase the floor area on the ground floor and before us on this matter. We have uh, material submitted by the applicant. Uh, is the applicant online? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Heidi Evangelista on behalf of the owners of 63 McGill. Yes, uh, thank you. I don't believe we need a presentation in this matter either. Uh, does any panel member have a question or are they prepared to put forward a motion? I just had a quick question. Um, I noticed that in 2018 there was a committee approval of a variance for FSI as well. And I'm wondering what has changed considering it was already they already received an approval. Um, the approval that was received in 2018 was for the front portion. Um, it was also an open to above, uh, and it was just to close that up and create a bedroom. Any further questions? We have a motion. Um, I'll, I'll do this one. This one is very straightforward. It's not increasing, I don't think, the footprint of the home, and it's in uh, a location adjacent to some pretty substantial amenities. I think it's very, very minor nature, and I'll move approval. All right. Do we have a seconder? Yes, Nimrod seconds. All in favor? You have your approval. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number six, 165 Lee Avenue. The purpose of this application is to alter the existing two-story semi-detached dwelling by constructing a rear ground floor deck and a rear second story addition. On this application, we have material submitted by the applicant, staff report uh, from Urban Forestry, and support from 180 Lee Avenue. Uh, is the is the applicant online? Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Mark Beaton. I'm the owner of 165 Lee Avenue. Okay, thank you. I don't need. I, I don't believe we need a presentation in this matter. Uh, does any panel member have a question or or a motion to bring? I would move uh, forward and approve the experiences. Uh, I believe it is minor in nature, and um, I note that there are urban forestry conditions, I believe. Yes, yes. forestry number yeah. two. Two. Okay, do we have a seconder? Oh, I have a second. Okay, in second. All in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Number 720 Alcina Avenue. And the purpose of this application is to convert the existing two story semi detached duplex into a triplex by creating a secondary suite in the basement and constructing a front basement walkout. The existing dwelling units will be located on the first and second floors. And before us on this application, we have material submitted by the applicant, a staff report from Urban Forestry. 
I don't believe we need, uh, do we have the uh, agent or applicant online? Hi, my name is Mike D'Olivera. I'm uh, here representing 20 Alcina and from replacement design located at 911 Davenport Road. Thank you. Uh, the, any, I don't believe we need a presentation in this matter either. I, the, any panel member have a question? I do have a question on the, uh, the two secondary suite units. The proposal is that they account for 66% of the interior floor space. So my question is, um, why is such a large increase from the current zoning per maximum of 45%? And so how are they, these secondary suites, not now the, the main use of the building? Uh, yes, yeah, so upon designing the conversion, the two-unit home into one-unit plus two secondary suites, it was important for us to create comfortable, livable units that would also allow for the owners to have their own occupied unit on the second floor, so that's the uppermost level. Uh, if you look at the way each floor is designed, it's done to allow for each unit to have two bedrooms, and each floor is exactly the same in terms of the layout, so they each have equal spaces here. Every unit is about 33% of the overall um, floor space index for the building. Uh, it's because of this that we're at 66%. Although the city has attempted to create new bylaws that would help the creation of rental units across the city, in this case, the bylaw is actually worded in a way that hinders this. In order for us to comply with this bylaw, the secondary units would have to be drastically cut in size, creating what are comfortably sized units bigger than most apartments being built across the city into smaller one bedroom or bachelor units. Uh, and in terms of the basement walkout at the count, we actually have a permit for this and it's already been constructed. If you look at our drawings, it's shown as existing because it's already been built. We do have a permit for it. Um, I understand there's a report from Forestry saying for us to apply for an application, but this has all already been approved and constructed. So I'm wondering also if there's any way we could avoid having a condition of forestry. Are there any other questions? So I guess the, the, the question I have then goes back to what's the main building type then? Is it going from a semi-detached duplex now being, it's going to, will now become a triplex? Well, the house was originally a triplex years ago. We're, we're basically proposing to turn it back into three units here, but it, the city does consider it to be um, a single family dwelling with two secondary suites. Um, I have, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes. Yes, uh, the, to the applicants, uh, you just mentioned that you do not wish to have forestry a condition number one in post. Can you explain why, please? Uh, as I mentioned, we already have approval for the walkout in the front. We already have it constructed. It was all based on previous permits that were done for the building. The only reason it comes up now as a variance is because it serves only for that secondary suite. And this is all because of the new bylaws that the city imposed about a year ago now for secondary suites. Prior to that, this wouldn't have been a variance. Oh, I see, because uh, you, you were trying to say that there will not be any more construction or exterior construction that will affect any, any trees or anything. Is that what you were trying to say? Yeah. That's, that's correct. If you look at our uh, footprint, we're not adding anything else that isn't already permitted. Yes, okay, I, I understand now, yeah, thank you. Are there any further questions? Does somebody have a motion? I, I can have Good. a motion to, for, yeah, to move for approval because he, uh, the first street condition he explained very well. And also I, I understand that it converts to the triplex, but it's sort of uh, making use of the uh, uh, existing envelope of the building and the increase of SSI is, does not bother me. So I, I move for, for yeah. Sub, Subject to uh, forestry condition number one, Yin. I will, I will take that, 
allowed to because he said there's not going to have any exterior construction and you probably will have any trees. Um, that's, that's something that um, we can discuss, but I'm going to import the uh, first record. Um, I'm happy to second this, but I'm a little bit confused about uh, whether we leave the urban forestry condition in or not, Chair. Well, it's, uh, yeah, uh, I think we should Can leave it in we'll, just in case uh, if it's not okay. necessary. Yeah, I, I would, I would, yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would just get in just in case, and it doesn't uh, prohibit them from doing it. It just requires them to make an application. Yeah, um, that's the only sort of uh, sympathize with them. Uh, sometimes going through uh, uh, urban forest uh, application takes uh, much, uh, but takes a longer time, and it's only just for uh, uh, caution. I'm not too sure whether it's, it's, it, 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 it would be made there the application because you still have to get forestry to approve and review your application before they can get the permit, right? But so, this is, I, 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 I'm, if, if, if I do not get support, I, I will put it in, yeah, if, if that makes everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so the motion includes uh, forestry condition number one, Yin? Uh, what, will you support it if I don't? Larry, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe, uh, Chair, it would be worthwhile just asking the applicant whether they have uh, any concerns about leaving that condition in. Yeah. Mr. D'Olivera, do you have any concerns about uh, yes, leaving sir. the forestry condition number one in? Uh, when this forestry report showed up on the AIC website, we, we had reached out to Urban Forestry to try to get them to remove it ahead of the hearing, but we weren't able to reach anyone before the hearing started this morning. So if it has to be in for us to move forward with approval, then I guess we'll sort it out with forestry afterwards, but I just don't quite understand why this report would have popped up in the first place. We're not actually proposing any new construction outside. It's all already been approved. So if need be, we'll deal with forestry, but I was just trying to avoid any delays moving forward. Okay, Yin, is your, uh, so I, uh, under, after that, are you uh, proposing the motion without forestry condition number one? Yes, I'm going to try. Okay. Yes, I, I uh, for approval without the, Sure, I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Yeah, all against? All right, motion carries three to one. So it's with, without forestry? I think so. Could you just confirm what yeah. that is, please? Yen, that was without the forestry condition? Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, no. All right, we're now moving to Thank number... Thank you very much. Now moving to number 1040 Lansdale Road. Uh, the purpose of this application is to legalize and maintain the conversion of the third floor of the two and a half story detached dwelling into habitable uh, living space. Before us in this application, we have material submitted by the applicant. We have correspondence and support from 41 and 32 Lonsdale Road. Is the applicant or agent online? Good morning, my name is Cindy McKinney. I'm the agent for this application. Okay, are you Cindy McPhee? Yes, I'm Cindy McPhee. Yep. I'm, in, I'm the agent for our application. Okay, uh, do, can we have your address? Yes, it's 16600 Bayview Ave in Newmarket, Suite 304. 
Okay, thank you. I don't believe we need a thank presentation you. on this matter. Do any panel members have questions? Or do we have a motion? I'd like to move forward a motion to approve the uh, variance. Uh, I believe it is minor. Uh, there is no uh, change to the exterior of the building. And so my motion is to approve with no conditions. All right, do we have a seconder? Yin? Okay, second, Yin, second. All in favor? You have your approval, thank you very much. Very much. Next item is number 12, 132 Ashdale Avenue. Purpose of this application is to alter the existing two-story detached house by constructing a front second-story addition and a rear cantilevered second-story addition. And before us on this application, we have material submitted by the applicant, staff report from transportation and support Four form letters in support from 133, 138, 140, and 143 Ashdale Avenue. Uh, is the applicant online? Yes, I am. <coughs> Can we have your name and address, please? My name is Matthew Chong, and uh, my address is 132 Ashdale Avenue. Thank you. I don't believe we need a presentation on this matter. Uh, do any panel members have a question, or do we have a motion? Um, if there's no questions, Chair, I'm happy to move a motion uh, to approve it. Uh, this is a very minor uh, variance, and uh, uh, I don't think we'll have any negative impact on the surrounding neighbors or neighborhood. So I'm happy to move a motion to approve. All right. And I have a second here. All right, Nimrod. All in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, committee. Number 12, 113 Burgess Avenue. The purpose of this application is to construct a ground floor deck at the rear of the existing two-story detached dwelling. And with this application, we have material submitted by the applicant correspondence in support from 126 Burgess Avenue, four form letters in support from 111, 115, 117, and 124, and 128 Burgess Avenue. Uh, is the applicant or agent online? I am uh, Mr. Chair J. Smith or 113 Burgess Avenue. All right, thank you. I don't, we don't need a presentation in this matter. Do any panel members have questions or a motion? Uh, if there aren't any questions, I would like to move for approval with no conditions. All right. It's quite straightforward. Uh, <coughs> Do we have a seconder? Nimrod, thank you. All in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Number 13, 204 Mavity Street. And the purpose of this application is to, to alter a two-story semi-detached dwelling by constructing a rear two-story addition. On this application, we have uh, material submitted by the applicant, 11 form letters in support, uh, all from Mavity, one, including one from Medlin Street. All right. Is, uh, 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 Mr. D'Olivera, are you back again? Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Perhaps you could give uh, your address just for the record. Uh, yes, I'm here representing 204 Mavity Street. I have here from Replacement Design, located at 911 Davenport Road. Thank you. We don't need a presentation in this matter. Do any panel members have questions or can we bring a motion? Um, unless there's any questions, Chair, I'll bring a motion. This is a pretty straightforward. In fact, there's no depth or height uh, variance. It's just a, a very minor FSI increase, and I think it's uh, suitable for the area. I'm happy to move uh, approval, and I don't believe there are any conditions. All right. Do we have a seconder? Yin, all in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. Number 14. 624 Winona Drive. 
purpose of this application is to construct a new two-story detached house with a front porch and a rear deck. The second story will be cantilevered on the north side. Before us, we have the material submitted by the applicant, a staff report from Urban Forestry, and two form letters in support from two addresses on Winona Drive. Uh, is the agent uh, online? Through the chair, the speaker has not signed in. However, we can try and contact him right now. Yes, please. Hello, Mr. Day. Lindsay and Associates. If you know the extension of the person you wish to reach, please enter it now. the chair we tried to contact the speaker and there's no answer okay you you have no further numbers or names through the chair no we do not all right thank you uh sylvia i believe we just proceed in any yes. event all right panel uh we don't have a, a, an applicant or agent uh, online however we can proceed with the application you won't be able, I mean, you won't be able to ask any questions of anybody, but you can decide whether or not to move a motion to approve or refuse. Uh, can, um, I, I will move for approval because uh, they, he, they had legal support from both sides of the labels, and, and it's a very straightforward application. Um, but it's, there's a forestry number three condition. Yes, all right. Do we have yeah. a seconder for the motion? Yeah, I'll uh, second. I, I think this is just a, uh, someone's got caught with a very difficult situation and uh, just looking for very minor relief of variances. So I would support your motion. All right. All in favor? All right. Approved. Skip now to 116. 123 Beaconsfield Avenue. The purpose of this application is to alter the existing three-story detached dwelling by constructing a rear one-story addition. On this application, we have only material submitted by the applicant. Is the speaker online? Yes, I am here. Can we uh, my have, name is Alan. Can we have uh, your name and address, please? Me. I'm sorry. Yes. Can we have your name and address, please? Yeah, my name is Allison Milne, and I'm representing um, Lindsay Jones and Peter Scruton from 23 Beaconsfield Avenue. And your address? 207 Indian Road. All right, thank you. I don't believe we need a presentation. Do any panel members have any questions? Or do we have a motion? Um, I would move motion to approve. Um, I believe the variance is minor. The addition is quite small. And so um, I would move approval and there are no conditions. Thank you. Seconder. 
Yin, all in favor? Have your approval, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and number 1747 Thornhill Avenue, the purpose of this application is to alter the existing two-story detached house by constructing a rear two-story addition with a ground floor deck. Before us, we have material submitted by the applicant and a staff report from transportation. Uh, is, this, is the agent online? Yes, I am. Can we have your name and address, sir? My name is William Harrison. My address is 139 Duvernet Avenue. That's Toronto. Thank you. Uh, we won't need a presentation in this matter. Do, do any panel members have any questions? Or do we have a motion? I will move for approval if there aren't any questions or discussion. And with no conditions. I'll second that. All right, thank you. All in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Larry. Thank you. Uh, number 18. 110A Boom Avenue, the purpose of this application is to alter the existing two-story semi-detached house by constructing a rear ground floor deck with a canopy above. In addition, a new semi-detached garage will be constructed to the rear of the property having access from the rear public lane. And before us, we have material submitted by the applicant. Uh, is the agent online? Yes, I am. All right, can we have your name and address, sir? It's Bruno Lopes, MXL Engineering, 1649 St. Clair Avenue West. All right, thank you. There's, I don't believe we need a presentation. Do we have a, uh, any questions or do we have a motion? Um, I do have a question for the applicant. I'm wondering if they have spoken with the abutting semi owner and um, did they have any issues? Yes, we, we spoke with them. Actually, there is a material um, uh, on the documents with uh, an application approved by committee in the past. He has no issues. And uh, yes, uh, we didn't, never got a letter of support from him. But yes, we've been talking to him and he has no issues. All right. Thank you. Any further questions or do we have a motion? All right. Um, well, I, move, I would move a motion of approval. Um, I believe the variance is minor and the, uh, there is no opposition for, from the abutting semi um, and there are no conditions. So my motion is to approve. All right, seconder. Yin, all in favor? You have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number 1831 Frizzell Avenue. Uh, purpose of this application is to enclose the front porch of the existing two story detached dwelling. And before us in this application, we have just material submitted by the applicant. Uh, is the agent online? Yes, I am. All right, can we have your name? Yep, it's Eileen Chung, and my address is 31 Frizzell Avenue. Thank you. Um, we won't need a presentation in this matter. Uh, does any panel member have any questions, or can we have a motion? Uh, unless there's any other questions, I think this is a fairly straightforward, simple uh, porch enclosure. It looks like there are other porch enclosures in the, on the street in the neighborhood. I would support it and move approval. Um, are there any conditions? No, no conditions on this. All right, a seconder. Nimrod, all in favor? Thank you, you have your approval, ma'am. Thank you very much. Move on to number 21, Two Barker Avenue. 
purpose of this application is to alter the existing one-story detached dwelling by constructing a rear ground floor deck, a rear one-story addition, a rear basement walkout, a new front porch, and a west side chairlift to improve accessibility. Uh, and we have before us on this application A material submitted by the applicant, a staff report from Urban Forestry, and correspondence and support from Four Barker Avenue. Uh, is Mr. Gain, uh, are you on the line, sir? Is the agent or applicant on the line? She signed in. Yeah. Wanna? We have to call him. Okay. Yes. Uh, can we Hi, have Mr. Your Chair. Name? It's Trevor Gain. And your address, sir? 10 Celebrity Place. All right. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe we need a presentation. Uh, any panel members have a question, or do we have a motion? Um, I, I believe the variances are minor. Uh, there is a letter in support from uh, the abutting neighbor, and so my motion is to approve requested variances and they're subject to urban forestry condition. Number one, is that correct? Yes. Okay, a seconder, Larry, are you, are you putting your hand up or, or are you just waving it? <laughs> okay, thank you, Larry Clay is seconded. All in favor, you have your approval, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll now go back to Number one. Six seven nine six seventy nine Dover Court Road. Um, purpose of this application is to convert the two and a half story detached house into a building containing seven secondary suites by enclosing a portion of the front porch and constructing a rear three-story addition and providing three parking spaces to be accessed via the rear lane. Two units will be located in the basement, uh, while another two units will be located on each of the three floors above. Uh, before us on this application, we have material submitted by the applicant. We have correspondence from transportation. Um, is the agent online? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes. My name is Jane McFarlane. I'm a planner with Westing Consulting representing the owner of 679 Dover Court. And My address is 268 Berkeley Street, Toronto. Thank you. Could we have a... Uh... A presentation in this matter? Certainly. The application before you today is to seek seven minor variances under bylaw 569-2013 and one variance for height under bylaw 438-86. And this is to accommodate a rear three-story addition to the existing single detached dwelling that's currently on the property. 
What we're proposing is to accommodate interior renovations, which would house a primary suite along with seven secondary suites utilizing the existing building frame of the house that's on the property. Since submission, we have consulted uh, heavily with staff, which has resulted in revised drawings that have been submitted back in September. And what we did here was we reduced the number of proposed secondary suites upon staff recommendation that we increase some of the sizes. So what we've done is eliminate two of the one bedroom units that were in the, that are proposed in the basement and added another two bedroom suite in the basement. There were some other uh, comments from staff in terms of design of the layout of the material for the parking as well as garbage storage and bicycle spaces. We've accommodated those suggestions as well and I note that there are no staff comments in opposition. The reference comments from transportation staff from August 24th posted on the Development Application Center indicate there's no concern. I've provided a letter um, back with the submission in February 2020, which outlines how the eight minor variance applications meet the four tests of the Planning Act. In terms of, in terms of some highlights of the, the, the proposal, I'd like to point out that the FSI is in line with approvals in the area, uh, including the variance at number 695 Dover Court, which received an approval for an FSI of 1.56, which is much higher than the 1.02 FSI we're seeking today. The proposal to utilize the existing housing um, uh, meets the policies in the official plan, which indicate uh, one is to utilize the existing housing stock where possible. This is also a great opportunity to provide new rental units in the City of Toronto that are ground related, not in high rise or mid rise buildings and on a property that's situated on a major street and in close proximity to transit, which is just to the north along the Bloor Street. The proposed addition at the rear has been carefully designed to minimize the building, uh, the windows in the second and third floor. We've kept all openings and windows to the first floor. The three-story addition at the rear has also been designed um, in line with what was what is currently on site in terms of a one-story and a two-story addition that's already at the rear. So we're going no further back than where the an adi current addition is today. And we're not going any higher than the current dwelling is today. So we do have a variance for height. However, that is to recognize the existing height uh, of the dwelling today on the property. So uh, in summary, it's my submissions as a professional planner that the proposed variances meet the intent of the official plan and both the applicable zoning bylaws. The variances will result in appropriate development of this property and especially where this property is situated. And as I mentioned, it's a great opportunity to, to accommodate a modest intensification in a ground related uh, offering on this property in close proximity to transit. I note that there are no um, public comments that have been registered on the, the website. I did want to point out that the owners of the property did uh, provide letters to all adjacent owners on Dover Court early last week, along with several properties on Hepburn Street and Delaware Avenue, which is the street adjacent to the east, in the hopes of um, providing information and uh, the owner's information so that the adjacent landowners could reach out if there was some concern or wanted to discuss the proposal and both the owners nor myself received uh, any inquiries or comments from any of the neighbors. All right, thank you, Ms. That concludes McFarland. my presentation today. Happy to answer questions and we'll listen to whoever um, has registered to speak on this matter. Okay, thank you. Does do any panel members have a question of Ms. McFarland? Yes, I, I, I do. Right. Um, my first question is, um, the, the notice indicates that there's either to be 
seven or eight secondary suites. Uh, I think variance number one talks about eight secondary suites, suites that will account for 71% of the interior floor area. So my question is, first of all, how do these seven or eight secondary suites, how are they subordinate to the main dwelling unit, which is, I believe that's the definition of a secondary suite, that it gets to be subordinate to the, the main dwelling unit. So how, how is that, uh, how, how does this fit with the, the zoning definition? Uh, through the chair, to clarify and respond to the, the question, I would like to confirm that at this time, it's only for seven secondary suites. Uh, eight was the previous proposal, which has been modified. And in relation to how the seven secondary suites um, situ are situated in relationship to the primary dwelling, it's to do with size. So the primary unit or the primary suite uh, proposed in the dwelling will be the largest. It will contain the most bedrooms. Um, that would be approximately 29% of the proposed interior space. Now I realize that remainder, 71% uh, is, you know, the majority or over a half percent of uh, the, the dwelling. Um, however, this is uh, the way that the zoning examiner at the City of Toronto reviewed the application. Um, there is another way to look at this in terms of qualifying the proposal as an apartment building, which is also permitted use. But after discussion with staff and with the zoning examiner, it was determined that it would be more appropriate to proceed via proposal which described the, the project as having a main uh, suite with secondary suites due to the nature of the built form of the house on site. So the house would very much function similar. It has the look of a single detached dwelling, um, but it's the interior organization that, um, that leads to that variance. Um, just to follow up on that, I, I do find it odd to consider a detached house having having seven secondary suites plus the main dwelling unit. It, how that can still be considered as a detached uh, house? The uh, through the chair to respond to that, the dwelling, um, the built form would be described as a detached dwelling. Um, and again, it was the examiner's uh, interpretation to take this form. Um, I know it looks, it looks kind of odd and the numbers certainly um, show otherwise. However, the, the function um, would function very similar to other buildings or other dwellings, I should clarify, that have uh, multiple units contained inside that built form. Are there any further questions? Uh, just, just a small question um, to the applicant uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you said that you have talked to the neighbors. Uh, they have no comments uh, that if you, but have you received any support at all? Uh, through the chair, we did not canvas for letters of support here. Um, most notably because there's a lot of renters in the area and um, we had a tough time reaching out to both owners and uh, you know, the renters due to the tenant profiling that's that's in this neighborhood. So uh, there are no letters of, of support here. So Ms. McFarland, um, are there other, and I don't know whether you know this or you could tell from the street, are there other uh, houses on Davenport and the near, near vicinity, vicinity which have seven secondary suites? or approximately that many? Uh, to respond to the question, Mr. Chair, 
Uh, I'm not able to confirm that information. I do, I can confirm that along Dover Court, there are detached dwellings with more than one suite contained inside the dwelling units. I can observe that from the number of meters, uh, the number of mailboxes that you can see from outside. Unfortunately, um, the uh, building permit information is, is restricted to owners uh, to, in terms of accessing that. I did do a committee of adjustment research request uh, and pulled all the decisions in the vicinity of the subject property dating back to 2010. I can note that there were several with secondary suites, but I can confirm that there were none with seven secondary suites. How large are these suites on average? We have a range of one, two, and three bedrooms. So five, one bedroom, two, two bedroom, and one, three bedroom. In terms of floor area, they range, the, the one bedrooms range between 50 to 60 square meters. The two bedroom range between 60 to 70, and the three bedroom is approximately, or just under 80 square meters. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's quite a large house, obviously. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, it is. Yeah. Okay, any further questions from the panel or do we have a motion? I, I, pardon? Oh, pardon me, pardon me. I forgot there's, uh, there's uh, someone just speaking uh, with concern. Okay, thank you, Ms. McFarland. We will go on to the next speaker and we will bring you back if, uh, to rebut. Do we have the next speaker? Through the chair, the speaker had signed in earlier but is no longer signed in. We could contact him now if you like. Yeah, see if you can get a hold of her.
versus web access to things like that. Answer? Through the chair, there's no answer, and we have tried both numbers. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McFarlane, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Mr. So chair. The, the person signed in uh, to uh, speak is, is not there, so we will, I will go to the committee now. Um, it, it, uh, it, it, it's, seems that uh, uh, secondary suite bylaws is is being honored more in the breach than uh, uh, than in compliance uh, this is the second one we've had today where the secondary suites exceeded the uh, percentage of the interior floor area uh, than the primary suite did so I suppose we're looking for substantial housing, more housing, and that's uh, how they're solving it. And, and as Ms. McFarland said, this could be classified as an apartment building. Uh, I don't know why the planning chose to consider it uh, secondary suites as opposed to an apartment building, uh, but um, uh, I, I'm prepared to go along with them and, and accept it as a secondary suite. And so we have to consider whether uh, the 71 percent as opposed to 45 percent is, is a minor variance and whether it's acceptable to you, to us. So any, any further discussion or does somebody want to make a motion? Yes, no. Um, I, I, my comments are that um, I think that's the 71 percent does not meet the intent of the zoning bylaws um, 45 percent. Variance number one, the, I think the, the purpose of limiting the amount of the floor space of the secondary suites is to ensure that the primary dwelling, primary unit is uh, the main unit. Uh, in this case, with seven secondary suites accounting for 71 percent of the interior floor area there's no reason that you need a main dwelling unit any longer these seven secondary suites can in fact be be there on their own without having any primary dwelling unit and uh, i i would rather see this as a a small walk-up apartment building uh rather than a dwelling unit and so i i have um serious reservations with uh, variance number one. So would you uh, be prepared? I don't know what the bylaws are with respect to apartment buildings. So I don't yes, know. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to wait in, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I sort of understand why the planning staff do not I would, will use the current zoning uh, as a, a detached house in, instead of apartment building, because I think there's a gap between uh, apartment building and set, uh, a house with secondary units. If you classify it as apartment, probably they have to go for rezoning. It's probably much more complex uh, issue, both for the planning department and the applicant. So I think that the, the changing of the downtown Toronto is so rapid that uh, I, I can see the design that these apartments are not too small. And I think that they're actually meeting the, um, the need of the city. And the, whether it is uh, soon the apartment building or a house is almost irrelevant to me. And I'm actually, uh, uh, contrary to Mr. Solomon, I actually in support of the uh, application. So you see it as a distinction without a difference? Yes. It's, yes. 
Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, Larry, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, Chair. I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I too. I'm, the fact that the proponent uh, has very carefully and closely with the city step and they're comfortable with this um, uh, gives me comfort as well. Um, I would agree with Rem on a number of her points. Um, this is major street uh, characterized by a number of um, apartment buildings and converted homes that are now serving as rental units. I think this is an area that uh, needs more rule. It is a walk from Bloor Street. Um, uh, there are a number of other uh, areas. I, I was so struck that the size of the units being proposed in the dwelling seemed reasonable. And I was comforted as well that there were two and three bedroom uh, apartments in there, which I think is, again, uh, uh, an important um, supply issue for Toronto. I did also note that the, the depth and the height, or sorry, the depth of the uh, new uh, addition isn't going any further than the existing home, uh, and the height isn't increasing over the existing. So um, I think uh, those factors and the, the need for additional rental accommodation in this part of the city um, might trump some of the technical complexities about whether it's uh, this bylaw or another bylaw, and I think we should. Uh, I'm prepared to support it. All right. So, are you prepared to make a motion, Larry? Sure. I will be. Uh, I can make a motion to approve this application. Um, I think transportation was a. Could I just add, I know that the um, site plan talks about permeable surface in the back for the parking area. I just wanted to maybe reinforce that with a condition that that area uh, be built uh, in a permeable nature. I'm not going to say pavers, because maybe it's gravel, maybe it's something else, but like a condition in there that requires that uh, permeable surface to be constructed. So I will move approval subject to parking area being permeable. All right, Larry, would you accept a friendly amendment? Uh, paragraph number one says eight secondary suites and Ms. McFarland has told us that was changed to seven and the purpose says seven. So uh, I, I, I think to eliminate confusion, we should change that paragraph number one to say seven secondary suites rather than eight. I yeah, I think that's a good gesture, Chair, and I heartily support that. All right. Do we have a seconder? Second. Yeah, Yin, second. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, three to one. You have your approval, Ms. McFarland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, number two, 20... 8 Marlowe Avenue. Uh, and the purpose of this application is to alter a two-story semi-detached dwelling by constructing a one-story rear addition with basement, a new rear basement walkout, and a new rear yard deck. And before us on this application, we have... Uh, Material submitted by the applicant, a staff report from transportation, correspondence and support from 20 Wiley Avenue, and opposition from 30 Marlowe Avenue. Uh, do we have the uh, agent or applicant online? Through the chair, neither the agent or applicant are signed in. I can contact one of them right now. Yeah, try Mr. Lightborn.
Hello. 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 Mr. Lightborn. Yes. 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 Uh, this is the Committee of Adjustments. Yes, I'm signed in via phone. Okay. All right. Would you uh, just let me turn off my cell because I, we're getting some feedback. Okay. Are you still with us? Cut out. Good morning, is this Mr. Lightborn? Good morning, is this Mr. Lightborn? Good morning, is this Mr. Lightborn? Yes, it is. Great, we found you. We just didn't have you under the number that you had registered with. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay, we can hear you now. Could we please have your full name and your address? Uh, yes, my name is Colin Lightborn. My address is 1668 Gerard Street East, Toronto. Okay, and we have your presentation, sir. Uh, yes, um, my client, uh, owner of 28 uh, Marlowe Avenue had proposed to put in a one-story rear addition uh, with a, a length of 3.4 meters uh, in consultation with the owner at number 30. Uh, the owner re um, uh, agreed to reduce that um, depth to 3.04 meters in compliance with the wishes of the owner at number 30 and remove the bay window. So we have met uh, the uh, concerns of number 30. So uh, I had to revise my application and unfortunately time did not allow me to um, resubmit drawings. Um, to, to match the new um, um, additions. So could you tell us which variances are affected? Uh, all the variants are affected, as a matter of fact. Um, variance number one, uh, which we were requesting 1.16 times the lot area, that has now been reduced to 1.148 or 191.873 meters squared. Yeah. Uh, variance number two, the building length, um, which is before you, was 18.11. That now has been reduced down to 17.119 meters. Uh, variance number three, um, if you see my site plan, uh, this lot was granted uh, front yard parking by the old um, city of East York, um, bylaw number 9-48, and we do have a license for that, and that license number is 0743. So uh, we cannot provide parking uh, in the rear because of the um, distance between the two houses. Um, variant number four, we were requesting um, um, a lot coverage of 56 um, uh, percent, 
And right now, we are now requesting 54% uh, or 0.54 times the area of, of the lot. So what we had asked previously has now been, the values have now been reduced. Yeah, and, but you couldn't submit your plans? Uh, I only uh, got wind of this last week, and I was unable to uh, make those changes in time to get them down to the Committee of Adjustment. Okay. So, um, uh, I'm afraid we won't be able to deal with it unless the revised plans are uh, submitted. So we would have to defer. Uh, okay, I guess we don't have uh, much of a choice. Can we get the earliest hearing date for that deferral? Well, deferrals are usually a minimum of three months. So. Um, Can I get some guarantee that if I get this in by Monday that we'll get on the next hearing date? No, we... we <laughs> this, this has been an ongoing problem with uh, uh, this application. I know the owners made changes back and forth, and then at the last minute the neighbors decided uh, that um, he wanted these changes. So my, my client in good faith agreed to those changes. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Lightborn, that if you want to make those changes, and I can understand why and, and perfectly good reason, but the problem is that we can't take uh, things on the fly, and, and uh, with respect to getting it back on the list, I'm afraid you have to wait your turn. We have lots of other things. Uh, you know, it's all, always last minute changes are a problem for us. Can I have a question? Can I ask the members uh, whether they are, they are ready to uh, to look at the application as it is without revisions? I know they are making this revision in good faith. But I think that the reduction is so minor. I'm not too sure it will make any big substance. Big, uh, difference to the application at all. So, I mean, what what we could do is proceed with the application as it is, and and you and the neighbor and you can you and your client can give the neighbor some assurance that you're going to comply with the agreement that you have, because we can't. Oh, I still need. There's two people also registered. No, no, I know. Well, just one, actually, because the other one's the applicant. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Lightbarn, uh, I, I think we can proceed with the application as it is, so long as you can convince uh, uh, the neighbor that you're going to actually comply with the agreement that you have with him. And, and if, he, if he's agreeable, we'll speak to um, him. Oh, okay. I, I, I would go for that, as long as you make that a condition uh, in this way, uh, the, the neighbor will see that we are indeed dealing in good faith. All right, All right so let's, let's move on to the next speaker and uh, see what his position is, and then we'll have to deal with it in, in committee. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Michel. My name is Michel Bolzuc. I'm actually the semi detached neighbor. I live at uh, 30 Marlowe Avenue. Okay, you heard what Mr. Lightborn said about the changes he and his client were proposed, prepared to make? Yes, uh, that's correct. Actually, we agreed on this compromise, uh, as you'll see in my letter of objection uh, that was filed on the 23rd, that we agreed to these changes two weeks ago, so it wasn't last minute. So I'd appreciate it uh, to have a, a revised blueprint today in front of me that I can agree with. But 
Uh, as Mr. Lightborn said, we both agreed that the length would be reduced to three meters, uh, and also that uh, the applicant would forego the uh, bay window. All right. Uh, I, yeah. So I'm uh, in agreement in terms of the the size with this compromise, but I also have another major concern that's also uh, also referred to in my letter of objection uh, regarding the setback and because uh, the this this addition is not above ground; it's also a underground component, and the applicant wants to excavate uh, 12.7 centimeters from the property line. And there's nothing in the application that says how my side of the property will be protected. As you can see on the pictures in my letter, uh, or my deck, my back deck, and my small mudrooms are, are very close to the property line, maybe five inches from the property line, and so very close to where he would be digging. Uh, and my uh, deck and uh, small mudroom have no foundations are just supported by wood beams, wood posts. Uh, so any soil movement uh, could affect the deck uh, as it stands, and also the mudroom. Uh, and uh, the my neighbor had mentioned that he was gonna get a soil report uh, in time for the hearing, but I don't see any soil report that's being uh, that's been filed today. Uh, so I honestly don't know how we would protect my deck and my mudroom, and that's a major concern for for me and my wife and our kids. Okay, that's not a, a variance requested, so I don't know. However, um, well, it's all linked to the setback, right? Uh, since there's no setback, I understand that my neighbor can build along the property line if he wishes to, but. Uh, since the, there's no setback and he wants to go on the ground, this causes uh, issues for my side of the property as well. So I understand in the past that you've imposed uh, conditions uh, in terms of protecting trees and shoring in some instances. So uh, after talking to people, my brother is a civil engineer, I also talked to people from the city and they also uh, told me that I should express these concerns to the community, that they understand that if they were in my shoes, they would be con concerned as well uh, for my deck and my my mudroom and, and uh, my side of the house because of the excavation and and the neighbor not uh, being able to explain exactly how he's, he's going to do this so, so close to the line. So I'm not sure that's within our jurisdiction. It's probably something that you have to deal with the building department about. Uh, what we're concerned are the variances uh, and, uh, uh, and, and my proposal was that we pr proceed or consider proceeding with the uh, variances as, as uh, they are in the application and that uh, you and uh, the applicant uh, arrive at some agreement that uh, he won't be, uh, he, he, he will comply with your agreement, if, if that makes you happy. Otherwise, we'll have to uh, defer the, for the application for a minimum of three months. So, Mr. Bogart. Can you, can, yes, can you send, uh, set as a condition that there will be a soil report done and protective measures in terms of the setback of the property? I don't think so. I think that's not within our, that's not a, a, a minor variance. That's something that you have to deal with at the building department. So, even if we approve it, He's not necessarily able to go ahead and just build. He has to get a building permit. He has to satisfy the building department. And he's not going to interfere with your uh, foundation. So there's another level that you go to where, you, where you'll have protection. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, and the other condition would be that uh, there would be a revised plan that we both uh, yeah, agreed. That would, have to, that would have to be between you and and the applicant 
because uh, uh, we we can't consider that at this stage. We would consider the the application as is. Uh, so if you're happy with that, we will proceed with the application as is, as, and you will enter into an agreement with the uh, owner. If not, we will uh, have to defer. Okay. Uh, I don't agree with the application as is. Uh, I'm prepared to accept if you set it as a condition for your approval that uh, the agreement we have, my neighbor and I, that I could uh, I could go with, but otherwise, no, I don't agree with your original application and the promise to do something, but that's not before us. So if you if you're willing to set it as a condition that you approve it, but with uh, that the agreement we've reached in terms of the length of the uh, of the addition and the uh, and no bay window at the end. If you prove that as a condition, I'm okay. But okay. if it's just approval without any conditions. All right. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bulldog. Uh, Mr. Lightborn. Hello. Yeah, uh, I I don't believe oh. that, Mr. Lightborn. I don't believe that we can uh, accede to Mr. Bulldog's request that we make it a condition that you enter into this private agreement. So he doesn't seem to be content to. Uh, uh, approve the application as is uh, and, and subject to this private agreement that you have. So uh, we have to consider a deferral. Um, and may I just uh, say one thing? Um, he was concerned about the, um, the collapse of his um, structure on the north side. We did engage a soils engineer. I do have a copy of that, uh, the method by which we will preserve um, the, any excavation from caving in. Um, this I only received on the 1st of October yesterday. So I'll be more than happy to forward a copy to him. I can drop it off at his house today, or he can get a copy from his neighbor at uh, 28 Marlowe Avenue, right. either which way. All right, Mr. M uh, Lightburn, thank you. That's, uh, again, as I say, it's not part of our uh, mandate. However, uh, uh, so we have to consider the, I uh, have to go to the panel and consider the issue of uh, um, uh, deferral. So does any panel members have any questions or do we want to consider how we handle this, uh, defer it or otherwise? Uh, I would move a deferral and that would give the applicant time to revise their plans. They do have this uh, agreement with the neighbor and so then they can revise their plan and the variances to reflect that and they can then come back. Right. Is, is that a motion, Nimrod? Yes, it is a motion. Okay. Do we have a seconder of that motion? Chair, can I just ask uh, uh, through you to staff, can uh, we just get um, some confirmation that uh, some sort of condition that alludes to uh, an arrangement between the two neighbors wouldn't be satisfactory or would have no, would it have no status or would it have some status? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, no, it would, this is a private arrangement um, and they are not acceptable as conditions of, of the, um, any approval. It's a private matter between two neighbors. Okay, great, thank you. Um, in that being the case, then uh, I, I kind of agree with Nimrod. I, I'd love to see this one go through. It sounds like they've got a deal, you hate delaying kinds of things, but uh, in all fairness to other neighbors, they should be also able to see a revised uh, plan. So I would uh, I would support Nimrod's um, motion. Um, um, I wanted to uh, read in. Yes, I agree with both of them. I mean, I'd like to see this uh, being heard today because uh, to me, I'm ready to continue the application. But just to give them a chance to work it out is 
probably the best uh, solution because you want to avoid a lengthy appeal process too. All right, all in favor of the deferral. All right, thank you. All in favor of the deferral motion? With a fee, Mr. Chair? Yes. Thank you. With a fee, Nimrod? Usual fee, yes. Okay, hey, Larry, the usual fee? Yeah, okay, with the fee. All right, the uh, matter has been deferred. So I need to break for one minute, sir. Okay. Next item is number eight. 1059 Bloor Street. The purpose of this application is to alter the existing two-story mixed-use building by converting a portion of the second floor residential space into a commercial office use. And uh, with this application, we have material submitted by the applicant and we have a staff report from transportation. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Barton? Hi there, this is Michael Barton. Okay, could you tell us your address, please? Yes, uh, 1489 Abbey Wood Drive in Oakville. Okay, and could you just hold on for a moment? One of our panel members uh, uh, left her station. She's back? Okay, go ahead, sir. Tell us about this application, please. Sure, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. So what we have here today is a two-story uh, mixed-use building. We have ground floor commercial space of just over 189 square meters. Uh, there's no change proposed to this space. Uh, on the second floor, there are two residential units. Uh, we are looking to convert one of those, and that is the unit that's at the front of the building, and it occupies uh, nine, just over 90 square meters today. Convert that into uh, commercial office space. Uh, there'll be no change to the, the building or site conditions. The building is constructed to the property lines. Uh, currently, there's no on-site parking or site access available, so all parking and access to the building come from the streets. Uh, the current building does fit within the character of the area with being a two-story height. Uh, many of the buildings surrounding are two and three-story in nature, except for to the south. Uh, you, you do enter into a, a residential community as you move to the south on Havelock. Uh, so one parking space was required to accommodate this change. As I indicated, there's no parking today and no opportunity to have parking on site. Uh, in this case, we are only changing one residential unit and 90 meters squared uh, from residential to commercial. Um, I didn't see any staff comments. I checked as of this morning and I didn't see any staff reports. So you had mentioned the transportation staff report. Um, I didn't get that or see it online uh, before this morning, so I ha haven't had a chance to consider those, um, but I would address them. Um, so just in closing, I did provide my planning justification report where I went through uh, the city's uh, policies and objectives and came to the conclusion uh, that the tests uh, of minor variants were met. And, and mainly just being that this does not do any uh, anything to affect the character of of the site or have adverse impact on the surrounding area. Um, the proposed change is a small uh, amount of floor area to be changing, 90, 90 meters squared in one residential unit. And we are talking about one parking space that would be required here, I think, given the proximity to transit, uh, strong pedestrian environment and infrastructure, um, and, and the fact that the current access to the property is by uh, parking on street or other off-street facilities, it's appropriate to maintain that access. Um, so for those reasons, uh, I believe the variances are appropriate and would welcome any questions. All right, does any panel member have any questions of Mr. Barton? 
Uh, I just, my question was um, concerning the transportation services report, which says that there are two boulevard uh, parking spaces being provided. The applicant can just confirm if that's the case. Um, so, and, and I do apologize for not seeing that report earlier. So what it is on Havelock, there is uh, parking that's, it, it, they, they function like parallel parking spaces. To me, those weren't recognized as official parking spaces, uh, just based on the limits of the survey and the road. Now, I do believe they would be available to the building for use. Um, the zoning uh, review also indicated that there were no recognized parking spaces on the property. Um, but again, yes, absolutely. If those remain available to the property, they would be used uh, rather than seeking uh, parking elsewhere. Um, but just wanting to ensure that legally this building, which functions as having zero parking, uh, continued that way. That was the intent. Thank you. Any further questions? We go to the next speaker, please. Through the chair, the speaker has not registered today. I will give them a call, though. Okay. Through the chair, there is no answer. All right. Uh, Mr. Barton. Mr. Barton? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, well, we have no answer from uh, the uh, uh, person who was uh, posing it, so we will proceed to committee now. Are there any further questions, uh, panel? Do we have a motion? Um. And the question I need to move for approval, and I think that it is just a, a very minor uh, variance, and given it on Broad Street, the parking is I, it's not, I, I mean, it's not reasonable to expect they provide additional parking. I will move for approval. I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Have your approval, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Number nine, 68 Winona Drive. Purpose of this application is to alter the rear of a two-story semi-detached dwelling by demolishing the existing two-story rear addition and rebuilding it. On this application, we have material submitted by the applicant. 
a staff report from Urban Forestry, four form letters in support from 66 Winona, 4951 Alberta Avenue, and 245 Tiro Avenue. We have opposition from 70 and 72 Winona Drive and a 14 signature petition in opposition from addresses on Winona, Tiro, and Alberta. Um, is the applicant or the agent online? Yes. Uh Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Committee. Uh, my name is Brian Abbey of uh, AdTech Building Consultants, and I am the agent for the owners of the property at 68 Winona Drive. Can we have your address, Mr. Abbey? Uh, my, my address is 382 Cleveland Street. It's here in Toronto. All right. So, um... Uh, perhaps you could just give us a very brief summary. I, I see there's only one variance. Uh, the, the problem is yes. there's uh, uh, quite a bit of opposition. So just, just tell us about this project uh, very shortly. Oh, absolutely. As I say, I'm, I'm here today just to request uh, one minor variance under the bylaw 569-2013. Uh, just to let you know that my clients uh, bought the house approximately one year ago. Uh, their intention is to renovate. Well, they, ha they did get a renovation permit to do the interior of the house. Um, and uh, the whole purpose is, uh, they, uh, this is to accommodate, accommodate their very young family. Uh, they have two children uh, and they're registered at the local school. So uh, uh, everything is... Uh, in favor of the children uh, moving forward. The application is to, uh, is to demolish the rear addition and to rebuild it slightly larger than the existing. And the intention of that is to accommodate a uh, kitchen on the first floor and an ensuite bathroom on the second floor. So, um, I think the important thing for me to point out that it, I believe that this is minor is that the addition will increase the existing FSI, which is 90.78 of the lot, by only 4.69%. So a, 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 a current, to a proposed FSI of 95.4. So I believe that this one variance is minor in nature. I did do a, uh, oh, we did do a uh, search of uh, existing uh, decisions in the in the locale. Uh, we have 51 of the properties were surveyed, and out of the 51, 13 were well over 95 percent, and three were over 90 percent. Um, and as you know, uh, we did uh, canvas the neighborhood and we had four letters of support, as you mentioned, and I think these are the critical neighbors that are affected, uh, 66 being the adjoining um, semi-detached, uh, 245 Tyrol is sort of um, off to an angle, but uh, is still affected by the uh, addition. And uh, the two on Alberta, 49 and 51, they're uh, immediately opposite to the rear. So um, I believe that the application does meet the four tests of the, uh, uh, of the um, Planning Act. I think the appearance is minor in nature. I think it is desirable for the uh, uh, development use of the land and for the building. The general intent and purpose of the city zoning bylaws are maintained, and the intent and purpose of the official plan is maintained. So uh, I believe that uh, if this is granted, uh, we would be fully appreciative. Uh, that's my presentation. Thank right. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Does the panel have any questions? Okay. Can we have the first speaker in opposition? Hello. Oh, we got it. Got it. 
Hello. <laughs> Who are we supposed to be speaking to? Oh, oh, Alex? Okay. Well, that, but th those are the owners, and they're only there for questions. So if we could just, yeah, just move on to the opposition. Okay. All right. Ms. Robertson? Yes. Yeah. Can we have your full name and your address, please? Kate Robertson. I'm at 70 Winona Drive. Okay, could you tell us uh, what your objection to this project is? Okay, so I'm objecting because I'm, I don't think this is a minor variance. It's a 11% increase in the footprint of the home and it's right outside my back door. Um, I think 11% is a huge increase. Imagine paying 11% on a mortgage. You know, that's a lot. Or getting 11% return on your investment, that's a big increase. All right, Ms. Um, Ro Ms. Robertson, yeah. you're, you're speaking a yeah. little too quickly and I'm having trouble hearing you. Perhaps you Okay, could... I'll slow down. So um, I just want to say that I've lived at uh, 70 Winona for more than 10 years. And um, I have got support of many of my, several of my immediate neighbors on Winona, Terrell, and Alberta Avenue who um, signed my petition supporting my point of view. And right. Would you please, Ms. Miss, Miss Robertson, it, it's good that you yeah. have support. They can all speak for themselves. Please tell us what your objections are. Okay, so my objections are that the, uh, the... So, the applicants colluded with the neighbors on the other side to um, build this, to make the condition on my side of the property, and they didn't tell me about it, so I didn't find out about it until it went to the Committee of Adjustment. My problem is it is located right outside my back door. Um, it's, it's a, a two-story solid wall, and it's going to be, it affects my views from my kitchen, my back door, my sun porch, and other windows. It goes up right outside um, my house. And it's going to change my view of the, um, of, of the backyard. And, and so, and it's really, you know, it's quite ugly. I also have other concerns about, um, you know, the, um, you know, the workers accessing the backyard. The, the, the addition is like right up against the side of the house, which is only a uh, foot and a half from the property line. We have a three foot, like less than a meter pathway between our houses. And this is gonna go right up against that pathway at the back. And there's also an easement in place, like for 50 feet. So if they put the addition right there, they will not be able to access their backyard or um, the back of the corner of their house, of the addition to, um, you know, to do repairs on the outside of the property because they'd have, to, they'd have to walk onto my property to do that. They also plan to put up a fence along the property line as well. There's no laneway access at the back of the house. That's the only um, access into the backyard. And um, you know, I'm also concerned about the, the tree. Like I see the um, urban forestry has put in a, a letter in the file. And um, that tree is uh, on a shared property line. And it's, um, you know, any damage to that tree is going to, you know, it's going to get rid of the, it's going to get rid of the, the like, the shade and um, it'll be very costly. So can I just read something that I wrote? Yes. Okay. For the past 100 years, owners of Southern Sonona have been, have had an unobstructed view of backyard trees and blue skies. This application puts a wall in the way, killing the view. 68 and 70 Winona were built three feet apart. No light gets in from the north or south side. The planned addition would cut even more daylight from entering 70 Winona. New homes are required to, build, to be built five feet from property lines, allowing for natural light. But this is not the case here. The only source of natural light comes from into a series of windows at the back of the house. 
installed for just this reason. The good life already, is already limited by the shady yard. Along with the location of the proposed addition, along with that, the location of the proposed addition will box in an already tight area outside my back door. In fact, if approved, the rear door will open into a wall just feet away. This wall would not only interfere with available light, but would create a highly undesirable and unattractive view. Okay, your time is is running out. Okay. So, um, did you want to do I? You want to call up any of the photos that I have that show um, where the uh, show where the uh, the location is? Well, I think we've seen the photos. If they're in the package, oh, you've seen them. Seen I don't have to. Okay. So I'm just going to add one last thing. The um, I, a lot of people in my neighborhood when I told them what was going on. I mean, they, the other people when they got signatures. The applicants, they didn't tell people, like, they only told people how great their addition is going to be for them. They didn't tell them, like, how detrimental it would be to my yard or to the, the neighbor. And um, I also just wanted to say uh, one more thing, and that's that, um, where am I going to write that down? It's that, um, the addition that they're doing is basically they're putting in like they're extending a fourth bathroom on the second floor and it's going to block out like my view in there for a long time and i don't think that that's um that should be done and so i'm opposing the uh, minor variance it's not minor for me okay okay thank you we have the next speaker Hello. Mr. Von Bitter. Hello. Hello, Mr. Von Bitter. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can, can you, you hear me? Her? Can you hear oh, us? Oh, good, good. I'm glad. I can. I can. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. That's great. Yes, I, I share Pete Robertson's uh, All right, just concern. A minute. This just, is just a minute, sir. Oh. Could you tell us your name oh. and your address? Yes, my name is Robert Von Bitter, and I live at 72 Winona Drive. Okay. And tell us why you object um, to this project. I don't have the letter that that I wrote in front of me, but it would be appreciated if the committee could read the letter before making a, a, a decision. But the point that I remember off the top of my head is that the houses that run north, uh, south from uh, Terrell Drive all had their backyards cut in half when the houses uh, on Terrell were put in sometime after 1926. So it's already a very tight backyard. In fact, if you came over to my my backyard, you might have never seen such a small backyard that faces onto someone else's brick wall. So even though uh, an addition doesn't sound like much, it not only in this, uh, in that backyard, and for all of the properties that had their backyards truncated, it's a big deal. And secondly, uh, if 84 um, if the ratio of 84 is supposed to be the maximum for density in the neighborhood, then you know we're not talking about a bump to 85 percent, which might be seen as reasonable. We're, we're, we, what's being proposed is bumping it to 95 percent. So I, I have big concerns about that. Um, yeah, and and uh, frankly, it, it's. Uh, it's just too much of a uh, 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 an addition for such a small amount of space. But that's, that's my biggest concern. And I think, as I was writing my letter, I was wondering if I was being a good neighbor, or a bad neighbor. But I think what I worry about is the effect for my neighbor Kate Robertson, 
who will have gone from being, being able to see her see some light out her back window to see even that's out her window that's not even when she's coming out her back door even when she's sitting in her living room and looking out she will now have to really strain to see any green space at all so in terms of that i hope that uh i hope the committee will uh, refuse this application all right thank you sir thank you next speaker Hello? Yes. Can we have your name and your address, sir? Uh, Albert Belarjan, Michael. I live at 60 Winona Drive. Yes. Did you tell us what your objections to this project are? Uh, yes, sir. I've lived at 60 Winona for 40 years. I'm the former head of the Residents Association and have been part of a number of neighborhood committees. Um, the process that we've looked at over the last number of years is that the neighborhood is, is fragile. Um, I would ask that you definitely take a look and review those pictures. Um, I do not believe that we're looking at a uh, minor um, variance. I think at 11% uh, and looking at the property and taking all into consideration that at uh, 11% uh, change in variance is uh, not minor. Uh, we have an official plan, and uh, I think in this case we should stick to it. Um, if you go back to a number of weeks with yours, uh, the uh, committee denied a similar variance at 98 Winona, just back of two or three meetings ago. Um, uh, the, the most um, the thing that upsets me the most is that the application uh, was basically done uh, behind the back of the neighborhood and then after the application was put forward, um, people in the neighborhood would ask for whether they approved of it or not. But the most disingenuous part of it is that uh, we were told that uh, um, the applicant made a determination of which neighbor would get the um, which neighbor would get the benefit and which neighbor wouldn't. Um, they made a choice, and uh, um, I think that in itself was in this, uh, disingenuous. Uh, one thing that I think you should look at is that all the construction, tearing down and the construction itself will all have to be con uh, carried on through a three-foot laneway uh, that, that's a right of way, but it mostly uh, uh, belongs to Miss um, uh, Robertson. Uh, and I think uh, that's totally disruptive. The fact about the sunlight, the trees, right, the smaller sir. backyards sir. that are all shown in the pictures. All right, sir we, so don't, I, sir, we don't have any jurisdiction over construction. We're only dealing with variances. And so the issue is, uh, a, a force space index of 0.84 goes to 0.95, and, and uh, so uh, that's that's what we're concerned about. Well, that's 11 percent. Yeah. Well, we've heard your submission on that. Do you have anything else to say? Oh, that's fine. I would ask my final statement is that I would ask the uh, Committee of Adjustment to uh, um, make one of two choices, turn it down or uh, outright, which it should be, or secondly, um, hold hold decision on it and have the neighbors uh, uh, discuss and come to a conclusion better than what the one that they're looking at right now. I do not believe this should be forced down Ms. Robertson's uh, throat. So thank you very much for hearing me out and uh, have a good day. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Abbey, you have some rebuttal? Yes, indeed. Um, first of all, uh, your last gentleman, uh, number 60, uh, I'd just like to comment that uh, the 84% is uh, is a nominal amount uh, that was is determined uh, by uh, the planning. But in actual fact, the, the houses uh, are actually around about 90 and change percent. And uh, 
I would I would surmise that at 70 Winona, where they have a, a third floor, a large third floor addition, that they're probably well over 100 percent. So um, I think that uh, that it's misleading that uh, this 11 percent, as I say, the existing are 90. We're only asking for a, a 4.6 percent increase, and. Uh, it, the other issue was about the trees. I would say we're not doing any excavation. The um, the new addition will be uh, cantilevered um, uh, from the existing foundation of the existing addition, and uh, this will be engineered with a structural engineer. We do acknowledge that there has been uh, the the uh, open forestry has a requirement, and we will work with them to make sure that, that the tree is not damaged, and it will be maintained. Um, I, I also um, see uh, forgotten the gentleman, Mr. Better at 72. We know now he, he he was suggesting that the. the um, uh, that the application was misleading. Uh, I don't believe it is misleading because the owners will demolish and rebuild if approved. Um, and he also mentioned about that the, in the survey does not show an addition at uh, number 70. Uh, again, I'd like to suggest that uh, the survey was actually done for 68 and that the two adjoining properties were truncated because at that time when the survey was done, there was a requirement for, for each of the buildings to be done in full. He also mentioned that it's not, um, was not a valid uh, survey. It says not, and the reason it's not valid is that I'm a requirement because the actual permit was a copy it was not embossed with the uh, OLS uh, seal. Other than that, it's a perfectly uh, good um, survey. Um, I, as for the peti petition, uh, I, I think that was the, the, that was canvas to the neighbours. It was totally misleading because it doesn't address the actual. Um, variance that was uh, requested. It's, it's asking, as a nearby neighbor of 60 every Nona, I do not support the application for a minor variance, blah, 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 to build a two-story addition, 0.45 from the property line. That's not a, the variance that was requested. The variance is for the, for the RSI, not, uh, sorry, the FSI. So uh, th these all these 14, 15 people were misled and signing this petition. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that I, I maintain what I said in the first place, that I think it meets the four tests of the uh, planning act, and I hope that uh, the committee agrees with me and that uh, they grant this, uh, this one minor variance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Panel, do you have any questions? Um, I, I do. Um, I've got a couple of questions for the applicant. The existing two-story addition at the rear, it is set back from the side lot line in, by how many feet? Mm. I'd have to, uh, off the top of my head, I would, I would say it's about five or six feet. I can't tell you exactly because I don't have the drawing in front of me. But, oh, there you go. Uh, it's five foot eight to the edge of the building, and then it's about another one foot six. So it's, it's about uh, seven feet, roughly. And so now the, you're proposing to tear that down and build a new two-story addition, but bring that new addition in line with the wall of the existing house. So it would be closer to the lot line than the existing addition is. Well, yes. Otherwise, and, there would be no point. And so if you, you see the, the dotted line yeah. above the word proposed, it is the existing, and we're building a whole new addition for, uh, that is uh, 14, nearly 15 feet long. And the, um, the adjacent property at number 70, 
the site plan does it show accurately the the end the rear of the house at number 70. no it doesn't it's truncated again like this um but uh, it would have um a, a, a mirrored return the same as uh the same as uh, uh, number 68. So number 70 has in the rear a two-story addition that is um, in, inset? Yeah, by about the same amount. It's, 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 it's exactly a mirror image of, of, of the property. And uh, it's two-story with a deck above and uh, the third floor has been extended. So that's why I suggested that the GFA of 70 is much greater than what we're asking for at 68. Okay, so how far back does that, uh, for number 70, does that two-story addition go? Because I'm trying to uh, relate it to your site plan to see what exactly is the impact. Well, as I said, I think it, it is mirrored. Uh, the photographs probably show it better. Um, I don't know if you have a photograph uh, of the rear. Oh, that's a, that's a point I'd like to bring up is that uh, I did submit uh, 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 on the 22nd of September with the four letters of support, a complete shadow st study. And it doesn't appear to be on the AIC, which I am very upset about. That, uh, the shadow study would have clearly shown that uh, this, the impact on 70 is very, very little. Okay, so I, I think just um, earlier there was a drawing showing the lots. Um, oh, that, yes, that, uh, that's, a, that's uh, a very good. You can see uh, on 70 Winona, you can see the uh, uh, deck at the, above and uh, the extended third floor addition, which would uh, certainly uh, illustrate the uh, greater floor area of that property. Yeah, uh, that's a great photograph. Uh, as I say, I will be, we will be demolishing down to the ground floor level, leaving the existing foundation in place. We're working with an engineer to uh, cantilever the frame construction. It's not going to be masonry construction, frame construction two-story, it will, will not affect the roots of the tree one little bit. Um, and we will, during construction, we will make sure that we put down mulch and uh, plywood uh, and protect that tree to its fullest. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the panel? Do we have a uh, motion? Uh, Chair, I'll start off. I, um, uh, I, I took note that um, notwithstanding, the, I mean, I, we all understand the concerns of the neighbors. We heard them loud and clear. But I did note that there is no uh, variance request for setback on the side. There's no uh, variance request for depth. There's no variance request for height. It seems to me this is a a modest extension of an existing rear yard uh, addition. Um, the variance being requested on FSI is, in my view, modest and minor and uh, probably doesn't reflect the amount of FSI that currently exists in the existing building. So uh, for those reasons, uh, I, uh, I will be supporting uh, this application. Uh, uh, Yim? Yim? Hey. Uh, we can't hear you. You're muted. I agree with all the comments that we just made, and then I think that we 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 only have one variance. If if the addition does not fit the um, uh, the matching, you know, there will be all variances uh, uh, we are looking at. Uh, let's not get sidetracked uh, with uh, construction issues or uh, any other issues. And I will I will second there is motion. All right. All right. All in favor of the motion? Uh, there, there was a, I think there was an urban forestry oh, yes. condition. Yes. Number two. So, yes. Number two. So with, 
So yes, it'd be urban forestry condition number two. Right, okay. All in favor? Have your approval, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Move on now to number 15, 310 Spadina Road. Purpose of this application is to alter a two-story detached dwelling by constructing a garage with a green roof in the front yard. Uh, on this application, we have uh, material submitted by the applicant and a report from planning. Oh, actually, Toronto Transit Commission. All right, can we hear from the applicant agent? Hi, uh, my name is Bennett Lovell, owner of uh, Three and Spadina Road. All right, could, could we have your presentation, sir? Sure. Uh, how do I do that? I don't have to share, right? Pardon? Oh, okay. Yep, I, it's up here. Um, basically, we have an uh, existing garage. Um, it's, we just, it's, it's really damaged, and we just replace it. So you're replacing your existing garage? Yes. All right, so it's already in the front yard? Yes, it is. All right. Okay. There's no back laneway access or anything. Okay. So, do any panel members have any questions? But if there's no questions, we can move on to the next speaker. Hello. Hello. Mr. Liang? Yes, it is. Yes, could we have your full name and your address, sir? Sure. My name is Ken Liang, and I'm accompanied here by my spouse, Gina Yi. We are both owners and inhabitants of 310A Spadina Road. Could you tell us what your objections are to uh, uh, the applicant uh, rebuilding his garage? Yes, so I have four objections and three questions. First one, the interior, the new interior separating wall that you're constructing with a concrete block, this is between a garage, will prevent me from opening my car door after parking in the garage and I will be trapped inside the car. I, yeah. The, the garage itself now, the both garage, it's like a semi-detached garage. I occupy the north side, Bennett has the south side. Yes. Yep. So, inter so currently right now, as it exists, I have an existing garage, the middle wall, separating wall, is, which is load bearing, is made of two by four frame construction. In the middle of the wall, there's a, there's a cutout. So imagine a 36 inch frame door, but without the door is in the middle of the garage. There's a, there's a cutout where I park in the garage. I'm a lot, I can open the garage. I, I can open the driver's side door and uh, my door ingresses into Bennett's garage. And I shut it and I shuffle sideways out the garage. The garages are narrow. So in effect, you're you, you're you're using your neighbor's property to get out of the garage. Yes, I am, and it has been that way previous to our ownership here, yeah. and to the previous owner as well. So the garage is so narrow that you don't have proper you can't can't get your car in properly so that you can get out. No, I can drive straight in. I mean, I, I measure out the, the, the door entrance and I buy the cars depending on the size and width of the car. So I can drive straight in, open the door, which ingresses into Bennett's side, 
I shut the door and I shuffled sideways out the garage. Uh, surely he has the same problem, possibly on the passenger side, but he must have the same problem, must have to use your property to get out too. Yes, and the previous owner to Bennett was uh, uh, Mrs. Green, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Samuel and Mrs. Clarice Green. They had a Honda Accord and they would leave every day and drive in and out of the garage and they would egress as well using the uh, using the, uh, the, 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 the cutout. Okay. All right. What, what, what are your other objections? Number two is the West garage wall, uh, which is, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a concrete block. It's a, it's, it's a common wall between Bennett's side and my side. It's one contiguous con uh, concrete block wall. And that acts as a supporting retaining wall for the front yard. The front yard is predominantly sand. So my concern is that when he cuts into that concrete block, he'll render my side of that retaining wall uh, unsupported and lack strength. So over time, there will be, you know, erosion from water, weight, uh, uh, snow, and, and water ingress into my side. Okay, your next point, sir. Next point is the height of his garage. His proposed height is 7.5 meters, which is 1.5 meters, or four and a half feet higher than the roof elevation of my garage. So that, that, that poses a bit of a, an ugly sight line from our living room, and also from the street. Yeah, your garage, your garages, these garages are in the front of the property, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. Your next point. Next point. The length of the proposed garage is uh, seven point, oh, sorry, I, I misread that one. So my, my, my previous point was the length of the proposed garage is seven and a half meters, which is, which is four and a half feet of the existing garage, which would need to be cut into the front lawn. So four and a half feet of, the, of his front lawn would be missing. Yes. And I think that's in the height of the garage, which I already mentioned. All right. Do you have any further points, sir? I have, uh, I have three other questions. I just don't know what's, what's going to happen to as he constructs it. First question is, any change in driveway height, grade, and material? It's a shared driveway. Second question is, how are you going to merge my garage onto the new garage with respect to the roof line, the floor, concrete floor, and the, and the dividing interior wall, as well as the driveway? So have you had discussions with your neighbor about the garage? Uh, uh, no. So, yeah, okay. Does any panel members have any questions? I have one other question. Yeah. Yeah. And my third last question is, what is the plan for your live green roof? Like, what is it? Um, how are you addressing water, snow, drainage? You're not showing any eaves drop on your on the new garage. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right. I do have a question for the gentleman. All right, just yeah. a minute. Just a minute. Who? Oh, oh, Nimrod. I've got it. Okay, go yes, ahead. I, so, my question is: Did the applicant did he come to speak to you before? this hearing to discuss 
what he's proposing to do, given that this garage is attached to your garage and they work together. He said no. He said they no, started. not prior to this meeting. However, I will, I, will, I will outline about four years or five years ago, we both did a joint application to build the garage larger, like so both sides, and we have clearance on doors, but time's passed and we no longer need to do that. So I believe he's just going ahead doing it himself. Okay, any further questions? And is there any kind of um, uh, easement or agreement along that property line for both landowners owners to be getting access for opening their car doors? No, I do not have a written agreement. It's just been used, well, we have used it since 1997, since we moved in, that's 23 years. And previous to that, the previous owners had it, which is the city of Toronto. It's the city of Toronto building, previous, prior to mal amalgamation. What do you mean the city of Toronto building? My house was owned by the city of Toronto and rented out to families. Yeah. Okay. And also my neighbor to the north, 312, was also owned by the city of Toronto. And it was sold prior to amalgamation. Yeah. But they, they were uh, just residential housing. Yes, it's a standard North Toronto style brick, two story, three bedroom house. Yeah. Detached. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I do have a follow up question. So, how do you see the, you and your neighbor resolving this problem? Um, I would say, one, I can compromise on the ingress into his side, even if he wants to build a concrete wall, that uh, the section in the middle that's been cut out uh, to frame the concrete around it, and if he's using 10-inch cinder block, that 10-inch cutout clearance will allow my, my car door to open into. And he can, he can finish off the inside of his wall, of his garage, with fireproofing material. Okay. All right. So can we go back to speak to the uh, um, applicant? Hello. Hi. Yeah. This is Ben. Yeah, so could you tell us, uh, uh, you know, you're, you've heard your neighbor's concerns. Uh, can't, have you, uh, do you think his concerns are legitimate and, and how can you address them if they are? Well, it's actually kind of surprising to me that um, we're having this conversation with my neighbor on the community assessment. Um, because a while back, we were planning to have the garage redo together. Um, well, the, the, I think that, that the root of all this is, it's a strange bylaw of Toronto that we have existing garage, we have no back laneway. Um, in order for me to repair or rebuild my garage, I have to go to community adjustment. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's a little bit, you know, uh, I find it a little bit strange. Um, but before I submit the committee adjustment, because I've city, the city of Toronto staff have contacted us and say, oh, your, uh, your zoning review is going to expire. Um, you need to, um, if you don't want it expire, you need to go to committee adjustment. Um, to repair your garage. And that's why we did the community adjustment. And we even, you know, reached out to my neighbor and say, hey, you know, we're doing community adjustment. Would you like to do that? Um, he said, no. Um, but they've seen the drawings. These are the same drawings that we went for the, um, the zoning review years back. Um, I, I'm, I'm really shocked that, you know, we're 
15 feet away, he could have knocked on my door and say, hey, you know, I have these concerns. So, um, to, you know, to, in response to, to the concern, really, the first concern really the concrete block separation. Um, it, 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 uh, our building code has to be fire rated. And two, and personally, I really want to have independent garage. I don't want to share my garage with anybody else, um, with my neighbor, even though, you know, they're good neighbors, but I still think, you know, I really want to have my own garage. Um, you know, it, 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 that's another reason why we would like to rebuild the garage because the garage itself is pretty small. And if you can see on the screen the picture of it, the previous uh, configuration of the walkway going up to the house, it's a little bit angled. So that we take advantage to increase the width a little bit so we can get in and out of the car without any issues. Um, that was really it. Um, the, the, the garage height, um, and the second point really, the west wall to sharing, and I, I really, we, we're already having this problem of sharing things. Um, I really don't want to share anymore. Um, so the concern of, you know, the share wall at the West, uh, really, it, 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 I really want our garage to be independent and detached. Um, I don't want to be attached. Um, because anything I do, I, I don't need to ask commission, uh, permission from my neighbors. It's really our own. So are your, garages are your garages attached now? Yeah, the, it, is the, it is attached when we first purchased the house. It's our intention mm -hmm. to detach it. As you can see, my neighbor um, all around, they're detached. Okay. And the third point regarding of the height, um, by the time we're done with the garage, we'll be, we'll be aligned with our front lawn. You, you can see our front lawn is actually higher than, than our garage right now. So by the time it's complete, it will be a straight line, it will be continuous of our lawn. So do you have a common wall between your garages that, that are supporting the 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 roof etc yes there is a there's a there's a there's a um, um, uh, uh, a two by six dots and really it's it's very old this garage and it's really not complying to code that it has to be fire rated okay to uh is that all you have to say, subject to questions the panel might have? Yep. Okay. Panel, do you have any questions? Yes, no. So, uh, I, yeah, so uh, just to follow up on, on your question. So given that there is a party wall separating the two garages and that the roof uh, and uh, the, these two garages are built into the ground, and, and so how would, how are you going to um, tear this down and re and build your new garage without affecting the adjacent neighbor's garage? Well, I need to get my I need to get my architect or engineer to figure that out. I think the the, the first really issue is I need the permission from community adjustment to rebuild my garage, then I can go to my app permit application. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I interrupt? Um, can I? I think that we're too involved with all these construction issues and technical issues. And we're looking at two variances, and please uh, uh, just look at the uh, variances. And then all these construction issues and sharing or easement is really beyond our mandate. Uh, that's true, but I think we have to be concerned about the impact. If we approve this, we've got to be concerned about the impact on the neighbor. Uh, it's not part of the variances, but 
uh, if we approve it, how is that going to affect the neighbor? Perhaps it'll be resolved at the building permit uh, level. Yeah, I agree, yes. A lot of these things they still have to apply for building permits. Okay. Um, Chair, not just not to belabor this point, but I just want to make sure I'm clear about the party wall in between. So it's not a solid brick wall. It's a, did I hear you say it's a two by six wall? Yes. Yeah, and yeah so, it is a two by six wall. It's really, if you look at a, 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 a building code, it's really not, uh, yeah. it's not, it's, it's not really a, 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 a So when you're parked in your driveway, you and your neighbor can actually see each other's car and well, the, the 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 garage is really too small. I'm not. I can't park my car in there. I have to park it on the driveway. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions, or does somebody have a motion? Um. I'm, I'm ready to move for approval subject to forestry one. The reason is that uh, we are looking at two variances and uh, all these other issues, either the uh, construction issues or they, they, they are the process or the discussions is really, uh, soon, I mean, it's not really our mandate. The, the, the two variances, uh, he's seeking is actually the existing condition. You look at it, and as of right, he can build a garage. Only requires that, that this is to clear the two entrances that are not supposed to have uh, parking in the front of the house. And that's that's my, my, my point. And I move for approval. Um, I'd, like I'd like to add a comment before we, we go to a vote. Uh, I, I think. It, this is, I would like to see a deferral because I think there's a lot more information that should be provided by the applicant. I, I don't understand how they've gotten to this stage and not have gotten the geotechnical and other kind of information needed to given the, the, the existing situation. And, and so I would suggest a deferral. We have, uh, Larry, do you have any comments? Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Nimrod, I, I'm sort of, again, leaning a little bit towards uh, Yim's view. Uh, you, you look at the characteristics of the street and many, if not all, homes already have front um, garages. It's a busy street, you know, they don't have laneway access, they don't have street parking. Um, parking, I think, is an important aspect of this. I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to the owner's, uh, you know, perspective that you know the garage probably needs to be rebuilt. It's probably too small. It sounds like it's unsafe. Uh, it probably doesn't even um, meet code. Uh, so, um, I think the variances being requested are in context minor. And to your point, Nimrod, I think a lot of these engineering things could and should be done in the building permit stage because you're not gonna get a permit unless you can certify that a lot of the concerns that you've raised uh, can be addressed. So for those reasons, uh, I think I would be in support of this application. All right, so uh, is that a motion, Larry, or did you make a motion, Yin? Uh, we can't hear you, you're muted. All right. I make a motion for approval with forestry condition number one. I don't, is there a forestry oh. condition? Oh, no, that was a mistake because it was a mistake on the report that they were referring to uh, a different item. No, no, no forestry, sorry. Um, I, I believe there was a TTC. Uh, right, yeah, TTC the, T condition. the TTC report, they have the mandate to ask for it anyway. We usually do not put it as a condition. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, do we have a seconder of the motion? So I'll second that. No All right. Forestry no, there's no forestry condition. Larry seconds the motion. All in favor? Larry, you're in favor. Okay. All opposed? 
All right, three to one, you Thank have your you. approval, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item, number 20, 57 Major Street. Purpose of this application is to legalize and maintain the basement secondary suite in the existing three-story, two-unit townhouse. Uh, sorry, um, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I, I have prior arrangement. I have to leave the hearing. Is it okay? You have quorum? Yes, yes, because we still have a quorum. And okay. We only so have one I'm, item I'm left. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I have prior arrangement. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, and before us in this application, we have a, a material submitted by the applicant, two form letters in support from 56 and 61 Major Street. We have correspondence and concern from 60 Robert Street and correspondence and opposition from 55 Major Street. Can we hear from the applicant? Good afternoon. Hello. My name is Cinda Chia. Uh, address is 168 Dover Court Road. Okay, can you, can you uh, speak a little louder, please, and just tell us about this application? Yes, uh, uh, the existing two and a half uh, uh, building uh, has already the existing basement walkout. And all we uh, try to do is uh, legalize uh, the basement apartment. And the whole street, uh, if you look at the walk, walk down the whole street, you can see a lot of uh, basement apartment in the area. And you can see three mailbox, uh, almost uh, uh, more than, uh, I would say, 50% of the house. Uh, two, three, or even four uh, apartment unit in a house. So uh, even though a lot of them may be not legalize it, but we chose to legalize it, and uh, uh, the uh, one, two, and three areas uh, are all in line with the city official uh, plan. That means uh, in the downtown area, uh, for example, the parking requirement, uh, for example, uh, broad, the broad, uh, the interior uh, uh, floor area, they are uh, nothing that uh, adding, nothing increasing, nothing changing, and there's no exterior, there is no exterior modification or changing, and I believe all, all those uh, variants are minor and all in, uh, in line with the official plan. Any questions? Yes, uh, it says that the sec two secondary suites will occupy more than 45% of the interior floor space. What percent will they occupy? The exactly number, uh, I have to check, uh, check the drawing, but uh, as uh, an estimate, the second floor uh, and the third floor is uh, probably somewhere about uh, 40 to 45 percent. So the uh, secondary unit, two of them, adding up probably about uh, 55 or 60 percent. Okay. All right. Okay, do, do we have any questions of the applicant? Well, if I, I'd like to get a confirmation of exactly what the percent is. So the, the variance number two can be modified to specifically put in the accurate percent number. The exactly percentage uh, number we we have the drawing. Uh, I can check it and uh, calculate it for you. And yeah, yeah, the drawing there it's uh, almost yeah. The shows.
there is a, an older previous owner also make the join there. We can check the older join also. This is the newer engineer. Are you calculating the percentage or should we come back to you after we hear from the opposition? Uh, you can hear the opposition. I can do the calculation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, subject to committee, do you have any uh, panel? Do you have any further questions before we go to opposition? Okay, can we have the, well, the first one is in support, but let's hear from that person. Through the chair, the speaker was checked in earlier. However, they are no longer signed in. I will give them a call right now. Okay. Somebody? Hello. 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 Hi. Can we have your name and address, please? Uh, Shitao Liang, uh, 3 Van Cornet Street. Is this about the uh, hearing for 57 Major Street? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't attend the meeting because of time, and I sent a Support letter to the to the owner of 57 Major Street. Where, where do you live? Where's your property? Three Van Cornet Street. Where is that? Uh, it's Lipping Court and Van Cornet, just to north of College, east of uh, Bathers. Okay, so you're you're in the southwest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tell us what you have to say in support of the application. Okay, yeah. Um, basically, in the letter I state, there are uh, two points I want to say. One is, uh, according to the application, the basement second suite is the existing rental unit. So the, tr the owner is trying to legalize it and uh, maintain it, if I'm correct. So I think uh, we should promote it uh, instead and encourage the owners with illegal uh, rental unit to legalize them. I think this is, you know, can improve the situation and uh, make the owner to manage their property better. And also it's good for the city to manage the rental housing market. Um, instead of let the owner just, you know, rent out the unit illegally. Um, the other thing is I know, I understand some neighbors may have concerns regarding the noise and overcrowding issue at the rental property, at certain rental property, but I think that has nothing to do with the legalization, uh, but rather a tenants management issue. 
So I also actually think if you legalize the unit, you can help to improve the situation, help the owner to manage their, manage their tenants you know, better. So that's all I need to say. So according, based on the application, the information I got from the application, I think I'm in favor of uh, support the legalization application. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, next speaker. Hello? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, if you speak up a little. Okay, I'm trying my best here. Yeah, no, that's can good. You you? We can hear you now. Okay. Please give us your full name and your address. Okay. My name is Maria Perrin. I'm the owner and I reside at 55 Major Street. I'm also speaking on behalf of 59 Major Street, Mrs. Suni Seat, who I received uh, permission to speak on her behalf, and you have that letter on file. Okay, thank you. Okay. Please tell us what your opposition to this project okay. is. Uh, first and foremost, he is, um, the drawings are incomplete, the application and are, are, are incorrect, as he's indicating. I did send a letter off here. When he bought the house, he has made renovations to the first ground floor, which he now calls one bedroom, which he turned it into four separate rooms, locked. It's, this is a definition of um, a rooming house. The same thing he did with the upstairs existing apartment, which was only a three bedroom apartment. He is renting it out as a four bedroom apartment uh, all, um, as, once again, as um, a definition under um, a rooming house. Um, the renovations um, at the bottom are ground floor, which is one bedroom. Oh, by the way, the basement was a non-occupied floor. It was not a unit down there in the first place. Um, <clears throat> he's been asked to come to um, committee of adjustment because the city has given him a stop work order, um, as you can see on my page three of my letter. Um, so this, uh, because he had to stop, he was renovating not only the first level, but the basement without a permit. Um, I had to uh, compromising my party wall, um, uh, among other building permit issues. So right now, um, he has rented out, um, and it doesn't, and he had compromised also our, that could possibly the foundations and the sound between the two. So currently he has been also at times renting out the place where he does not live as an Airbnb in the first time he came around. He has stopped that, but once again, this is an incomplete documentation uh, and it's also his plans are also um, not correct. He moved, um, he moved the first uh, floor bathroom and kitchen and placed it underneath the ex exit stairs from the unit above without a permit. So as you can see, the tenants who were there gave me the photographs of the, um, the drawing. And in his drawing that he submitted to the city, um, I believe, sorry, I'll give you the actual drawing number for the first floor, and if you can call that up on the screen, where he says it's an existing reading room. That used to be a, an existing bathroom and an exit out. He made that without reservations, and right now that is an actual bedroom with a door uh, locked, with a door um, on that existing bedroom along that same wall preventing anybody from uh, exiting out at the back. So, Ms. Perrin, when you say, yes. when you say that the renovations he made uh, fit the definition of a rooming house, are these rooms rented out individually, so far as you know? Yes, yes, and with locks on them. And the, tenant just, the tenants have just moved out this week. But if you look at my drawing, my a letter, uh, if you go to, um, you go to page four.
Okay, yes. you see that door straight ahead? So you're looking, this one here, you're looking towards the back of the house. So the only common space is, is right where I'm standing, looking forward. So that door is not on his drawing whatsoever. That is a locked bedroom. The next door where you see a key hanging down, that's another bedroom. The other door that you see here next to, I guess that, that's another bedroom locked. And if you go to the next page, you'll see the front of the house. That other door, um, well, you see the entrance, and then you see the other door there. Um, that is also another bedroom. Right next to the fridge, that's where he has a washroom. And if you go to page eight of my drawing, oh, that's the kitchen that he's placed underneath the stairs. There was a stair going down to the basement at that level when he bought the house. And that's in the floor plans that I sent you. And I'll go back because we had to fix the rear wall together and he's refusing to do so. So the, this is one side of the washroom, that's the other side of the washroom and there's a machine in the middle that prevents you from space there anyway. So all of this was all done um, and he has falsely used, oh, and that's out the exterior currently, of the last bedroom with all the electrical wires. But basically, all the, the rooms have locks. The same ha is happening above. He's, the living room that he says it's a living room is now a bedroom. So, and if you were to call that number that you see at the door where he's renting right now, and I have a recording of this if you want to, there, uh, the upstairs three bedroom apartment is being rented out as four bedrooms apartment with the only um, common space is the eat-in kitchen and the deck above. So well, right now well, we have a... a so Ms. Perrin, what, what yeah. is happening in the basement? Because that's what the application relates to, okay. two secondary suites. So in suites the basement, the basement, okay, right now he's... The reason he had a stop work order is that he was renovating the basement without a permit to put another unit down there that never existed. In the basement where you see where he says living room, dining room, there used to be a washroom um, along the back wall that he has now created and put it along um, the uh, party wall and probably uh, compromised the foundations there. Um, the bedroom he's asking to put out front there, um, that window he uh, broke through underneath that is a porch, so that's not going, and then there's a set of stairs. So this is underneath a porch, it doesn't go out. Um, the proposed bedroom, that used to be a kitchen, a little, there wasn't even a kitchen there, um, this was just, um, I think I gave you the actual permit that was originally there when he bought the house. So the window there in the, the second proposed one towards the east is the only window that actually you can get out into um, a space without having it being impeded under a, um, a uh, ver enclosed veranda on either side. Plus he removed the set of stairs that were um, going down to, to the basement and um, without a permit. So where's the second suite in the basement? The, the basement was empty. I don't know what he's saying about a second suite. He's asking the door, he's asking to put three units. And in his drawings on the first floor, he says he only has one bedroom unit. He re he's uh, incorrectly labeling the rooms, and then what he does is just rents them out as individual rooms, which he might do the same here once this proposed uh, recreational room will probably become a bedroom. Yeah, okay. So now, uh, the entrance time, to this time, suite is... Ms. Ms. Okay. Perrin, so, your time is up now. If you can just wrap up. Okay, so what I'm wrap would like to see him deferring. He, by the way, he didn't um, uh, consult myself or the next door neighbor on this. 
And we also have an existing permit, building permit, um, that I show on page two that has to uh, deal with our party wall at the back that has been uh, slowly bowing out and needs to be fixed. He hasn't addressed that before right. he can so, do this. So that's not part of our mandate. No, but what I'm saying is that is he using this as an occupancy of a ruling house and he's asking to put in a, a unit at the basement or is he going to reinstate the first floor back to one bedroom apartment as he has said that is existing in his drawings? Well, yes. The, the, the Without a permit. Right. He says uh, in the application, I take it to mean that there's going to be two suites in the basement and the rest of the house is one occupancy. Uh, yeah, right now, there no, and that's incorrect. Okay. Right now, there's a there's a, an existing uh, three bedroom apartment unit, or uh, not illegal necessarily, but this was a two story uh, single family two story. There's already two units in here. Yeah. Okay. The top, all right, yeah. so your time is up, and just hang on. The uh, panel may have some questions. Nimrod, Larry, do you have any questions? No. Okay, we'll go back to the applicant then. Uh, it's my, my turn? Yes. Okay, uh, the house was purchased a few years back. Its uh, previous owner has uh, built a bit also. Uh, we know that uh, it is uh, already uh, legal two units. Uh, the second floor, the third floor is one unit, and the main floor and the plus the basement is also one unit. However, the owner occupy main floor and the basement is vacant. So uh, instead of keep them vacant, uh, we probably use them for the third uh, unit. And it has a separate entrance, it has a kitchen, it has a washroom. And our neighbor also, you better legalize it before you use it. That's why we are here today, and uh, that's why we asking if we have uh, the uh, COA approve the basement can be a third unit. So the whole house will have uh, three units instead of uh, one unit. That's okay. all. All right, but you, but you heard your neighbor say that the actual, actually the house is divided into uh, separate bedrooms rented out to different tenants. It doesn't sound like a primary unit. Well, I, the neighbor was uh, uh, talking about the uh, different tenant, maybe the current tenant, uh, we have uh, ch uh, changing tenant many times, and each tenant they may have a different uh, setting or how they use it, and we never rent room by room, as uh, she said. That's not true. We are collecting one rent, we are renting to uh, the person's name on the lease, but I would not discuss anything relating to tenant. This is beyond our COA <laughs> uh, discussing <laughs> area. It should leave to the landlord tenant board or any other uh, uh, bylaw officer, not today's uh, talk topic. Uh, I'm finishing, and if you have a question, I will be glad to answer. Okay. Could you, did you do the calculations with respect to the percentage of the uh, uh, secondary suites? Uh, 
Hello? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Did you do, uh, from did, the, did you do the calculations to tell us what percentage of the secondary suites occupy? Uh, from the drawing, I can tell it's about 604 square foot, and the whole, whole house building is about 1,455. And the main floor is, if it's the same area as the basement, probably it's also 604. So, so out of, out of uh, uh, 210 square, square foot total, the basement occupy about 64. And the main floor is also 604. So it's about uh, somewhere about 50 something. 108. Pardon? So what's the percentage? Less than 60%. Less than 60? Oh, 64. I, I see they, they calculated for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what, one to only divide by 201. 2,100 something. Sir, I don't want to, to, you to tell me how you do it. I'm not a math teacher. I want to know the percentage. Uh, let me get a calculator. Six percent? Brian? No, I think he said it. I, th I thought you were getting his numbers and doing the calculation in your head. <laughs> 55. Okay. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Panel, do you have any questions of this applicant? 55 or 65? I think 65. I, th I thought so. Brian? Okay, uh, Nimrod, uh, Larry, do you have any questions? Where'd they go? They're just shaking their heads now. I can't see. I don't. Can I see them? I don't have. I don't have any questions. Okay, Larry. All right. Do we have a motion or comments? Yeah, um, I'll give some comments. I, I'm. I think variants one and two are really clear that the intent of the zoning bylaw is that a townhouse be limited to one secondary suite. That's what variance one is about. Variance two then is to, the objective of the zoning bylaw is to limit the size of the secondary suite so that it is smaller than the primary dwelling unit. And that is not the case in, in this application. And so I have um, concerns them with this application as it's being put forward. And uh, I think what we're seeing is uh, we've had several secondary suite proposals, applications in this hearing. And you can see what's happening is that it seems like people are using the secondary suite zoning regulations as a way to change the nature of the use of the building. This is no longer than a townhouse. It becomes, an, under this application, a three-unit residential building. And, and so I would certainly oppose this, this application. Okay, Larry? Um, in this instance, so uh, normally um, I would be sympathetic to, um, you know, efforts to increase uh, rental accommodation in areas. This is close to the university. I imagine it's probably university students are using it. Um, but I, uh, in this instance, I'm actually uh, sympathetic to Nimrod's view. Um, uh, this is an adjoining, this is a, a, a semi that is adjoining. Um, the neighbor has some, I think, fairly serious and legitimate concerns. Um, I, I do think that uh, when you make the calculation on the increase 
um, in uh, floor space for secondary units. It's 50% more than what the bylaw is requiring, which I uh, think trips into that area of being uh, no longer minor. Um, so in that sense, I think I might agree with Nimrod on this one. Okay, well, I have some concerns as to whether this is, these are really uh, the only secondary suites in the in the building. Uh, I, I'm not convinced that the uh, the balance of the house beside the basement is used as one unit. Uh, so uh, I would agree. Uh, that, so is there a motion to uh, re reject the application? Yeah, I'll, I'll put forward a motion to refuse uh, the requested variances. All right, Larry. I'll second that. Yes, I'll second that. All right. All in favor of the motion? Motion is passed. Your application is refused, sir. Okay. So that's that's it. It's uh, five to two. Thanks, guys. Thanks, all, everyone. Thanks, staff. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't have to do that technical stuff. I would have missed the meet, the funeral anyhow. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it was at one o'clock and way up north. 